Hi, my name is Olivia Zhao, and today my presentation will explore the journey of promoting health equity. So firstly, a little bit about me. I am a senior based in California. Within school, I serve as President Secretary General of our student-run MUN conference. Outside of school, I'm the founder of the Teen Wellness Alliance, which aims to promote mental health through our 90-page wellness handbook. I'm extremely passionate about public health and my research experiences include serving as an intern at a medical device consulting firm and City of Hope's Diabetes and Metabolism Research Institute. Now, what is health equity? Health equity is the state in which everyone has a fair and just opportunity to achieve their highest level of health, regardless of factors like race, ethnicity, disability, or socioeconomic status. Now, is health equity a reality globally or in the US? Far from it. Since 2020, the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has revealed the prevalence and deadliness of health inequities, which include the ones listed in the top right image. For months, drug companies delivered life-saving vaccines to a few dozen developed countries, while a majority of developing countries were neglected. Table 1 illustrates a study that utilized a data set that accounted for 99.7% of the world population. Now, these scientists used the Gini coefficient, where a greater coefficient equals a greater degree of inequality. All Gini coefficients listed in the table are above 0.5, indicating severe inequality. These results confirm extreme disparities that occurred during the pandemic in fields such as infections, hospitalizations, and mortality. So, why is health equity important? Well, a healthy population is not only the foundation of a vibrant society, but at an individual level, health equity provides every one of us an opportunity to live a long and healthy life. While fighting inequalities in today's healthcare environment requires a societal effort, government bodies and agencies such as the U.S. Congress and Food and Drug Administration, also known as the FDA, play a significant role in improving health equity. Now, the purpose of my presentation is to provide an overview of current laws, regulatory policies, and initiatives taken by the U.S. government in recent years and propose potential areas for further actions by the FDA and Congress. Over the last century, America's overall health has improved significantly. For example, in the 1900s, an average American's life expectancy was around age 47, while in 2023, it has risen to 79.25 years. However, this progress is not the entire story. Profound racial and ethnic disparities in health, well-being, and life expectancy are still the norm. As seen in the bottom right and top right images, uh, bottom left and top right images, these inequities are especially stark for American Indians and Alaska Natives and African Americans. Countless factors have contributed to historical and current health disparities, as seen in the bottom right image. These essential factors include unequal access to healthcare and medicinal technologies, overall low affordability of healthcare services, insurance, and medical products, lack of awareness of diseases, medical care, and the need to participate in clinical clinical trials, and many more other economic, political, and social factors. Now, the following were the most notable White House and congressional initiatives that started to address health inequities nationwide. President Barack Obama's Affordable Care Act was signed into law in 2010 to address health insurance access disparities. However, as seen by the graph on the right, inequalities still exist. On Biden's first day in the White House office, he signed Executive Order 13985, issuing a government-wide diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility plan for all federal agencies. The Food and Drug Omnibus Reform Act requires the development of clinical trial diversity action plans when a drug or medical device company submits its clinical study plan to the FDA for approval. Now, this will ensure the safety and effectiveness of drugs or devices for diverse patient populations once released on the market. Now, let's take a look at the current status of FDA policies and initiatives. First, to ensure coordinated efforts across the entire agency, the FDA set up a new Office of Minority Health and Health Equity. This organizational change raised awareness about clinical trial diversity, educated consumers on diseases that disproportionately affect minority groups, and supported intra- and extramural minority health research projects. Second, research initiatives launched by the FDA target specific facets of the problem, ranging from general solutions like the Enhanced Equity Initiative to specific ones like the Healthcare at Home Initiative. 
And thirdly, the FDA presents clear recommendations to stakeholders through its published guidance documents, with examples listed on the slide. The shortcoming? These guidances, though thorough, have an extremely narrow scope. Now, although the U.S. Congress and FDA have taken concrete actions to address vast disparities existing in today's healthcare systems, those actions alone will not be adequate. In these next few slides, I'll propose several future areas of focus for the FDA and for further improving health equity. First, the FDA must increase its data collection and disparity identification effectiveness and efficiency. This will focus this administration's priorities and limited resources on where they'll benefit the most. Second, it is important to continue allocating resources to successful existing efforts, such as clinical trial diversity and home medical device initiatives. Third, promoting digital technological innovations and speeding up regulatory approvals of transformative digital solutions are critical. Fourth, I recommend the FDA set up a new special programs that mirror successful existing ones. This will allow the FDA to take advantage of early collaboration in speeding up the development and approval process. Fifth, streamlining the regulatory process to reduce regulatory burden. This effort, along with implementing a risk-based approach, will help reduce the cost of drug or device development. Sixth, recommending the FDA directly collaborate with the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services to speed up the approval process and have affordable insurance coverage. Seventh, finalizing health equity-related guidance documents. This will set up a clear direction and expectations for companies carrying new medical devices or drugs for FDA approval. And lastly, strengthening public awareness and community engagement surrounding health equity, addressing the lack of knowledge problem. In conclusion, significant disparities exist today in the pursuit of establishing health equity. It will take a collective effort from the government, academic community, and health industry to build a future where, where health equity is a reality. Now, these are my references and sources. And lastly, I'd like to thank GHLC at John Hopkins University for this incredible opportunity to present my research, as well as the medical device consulting company I worked with. Thank you so much for listening, and here's my contact info if you'd like to reach out.